Hi, I'm Rick Kaler. Thanks for joining me. So why do we put off taking action that's really important to our financial health? Last week, we explored some of the financial emergencies that can be avoided with planning or prevention. It's really easy to understand why planning is so important, but it's less easy to understand why do we procrastinate on important things that are actually in our best financial interest and those that we love. I'm guessing nine out of 10 people would agree that planning makes sense. Just knowing, however, that we should plan isn't going to change most financial behaviors. It's the should that gets us. We already know what needs to be done. That can be obvious. But the bigger question is why we put off doing it. And when we drill down, the answer to that question, I think, is almost always rooted in our emotions. Our procrastination often has deep roots in anxiety, fear, and grief. Many of these uh, blocks to planning can be tied back to things we experienced earlier in our lives that were just never resolved. For example, I once had a client, a business owner in his 50s, who had committed to contributing several thousand dollars a month to his retirement plan. He knew he needed to prepare for retirement. In fact, that was the main reason that he engaged my services. He himself had decided on the monthly amount. His business was thriving and he could easily afford to make the payments. Yet he never managed to get around sending in the checks. He'd write out the checks but not send them in. When we discussed this, he couldn't come up with really any reasons for the procrastination outside of the, that he never knew when his business might need some additional money if it was in a little bit of a down cycle. Finally, I asked him, what's retirement mean to you? He pondered, said nobody had ever asked him that question before. He finally responded, you know what, it means I die. He went on to explain that every male in his family had died within two years after retiring. He didn't want to retire, or even think about preparing for retirement because he wasn't ready to die. Retirement to him didn't mean moving into another phase of life, it meant the end of life. And like we say a lot, every financial behavior, no matter how illogical it is to you or others, makes perfect sense when we understand the underlying belief system. So it made perfect sense. I suggested to him that maybe retirement could mean that you want, that, that you actually get to do what you want, when you want, and with whom you want. We also worked with the idea that preparing financially for retirement did not necessarily mean he had to retire before he was ready to do so. Once he became aware of his emotional block, he began making the contributions and in fact, double that amount to his retirement plan. The reasons that block us from acting to support our future financial well-being can be both internal and external. If you're putting off some sort of financial action that you know is important, you might consider whether any of the following factors apply. The first one is avoidance. It's feelings of self-doubt, fear of pain or anxiety around the task, just like I'd rather not do it. Depression can be a big immobilizer. A fear of asking for help and fear of trusting anybody to help. Second one is perfectionism, um, the fear of failure, the fear of being criticized both externally by others 
and actually more powerfully internally by your inner critic. Ambiguity is the third one. Uh, just a lack of clarity about the task. I don't understand it, I don't know what to do. Feeling of being overwhelmed. Difficulty prioritizing in the absence of a crisis because so many things, especially estate planning, isn't a crisis today. Uh, being focused rather than on immediate tasks that really get our attention. Narcissism is number four, which is overconfidence in getting it done at the last minute. Needing chaos or pressure to provide adrenaline, the ability to focus to the exclusion of everything else, and a feeling of being fully alive drives narcissism. Physical issues, big deal, you know, if you're sick, you're fatigued, you're ill, you're, you're I mean, not a lot can get done when someone is physically sick. <clears throat> or, you know, even if you, you can't write or you can't move about or you're saying you're physically impaired. Number six is a lack of knowledge. It's uh, not knowing what you don't know, right? Uh, unsure how to get needed help and information. That can be a good, big one. The way you can tell if it's an emotional hook or not, I mean, if you don't know, you don't know, right? Once you know, once you have that information, if going into action isn't immediate, like, oh, I didn't know that, boom, 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 done. If uh, getting that knowledge doesn't move the needle, doesn't uh, result in getting the job done, then you can be almost assured that it's an emotional. And finally, number seven, financial. Just simply not having the money to take necessary action. With help, these issues can be resolved. The first step is simply being aware of them, identifying them, and to begin to understand how they block you from taking the action you know to be important for your financial health. Thanks for listening.